Uh, this video is just doing a still life demo for how to digital paint com. My name's Cam. Um, anyway, the the basic process is just sketching it out, cleaning up the lines, um, putting the basic colours down, and then you know adding a few more colours and just it's all general to specific. I generally work. Um, pretty sketchy at first, just being really quick and not um, taking too much time with it, just to get something down and kind of warm up a bit as well. I don't want to be too um, stiff going into it, so I'm just I've got a um, a teapot and a little glass on the table in front of me, just drawing them. As I, as I see them. I try with these studies to get a variety of objects. So um, one day I might do metal or ceramic or you know plastic, leather, cloth, different things. So you're getting used to the different qualities of different materials and then also practicing it it's good practice for everything, seeing colour, painting, rendering, drawing, all these things and I, I tend to sketch it out rather than go in and put in big blocks of colour and big shapes as some people do. The reason I draw it is simply for practice. The, the reason I do these are purely for practice, for a number of things as I mentioned like seeing colour and drawing and everything and understanding the different qualities of materials so as you can see the Joy Digital you can resize it and everything just make the composition a tiny bit better I've made a new layer dropped the opacity on the, the previous layer and now I'm carefully sketching now. This this video is at four times speed so obviously you probably wouldn't draw this fast. You, you want to have an accurate drawing because if your drawing is right then the painting will be so much easier because things will be in the right place. So, um, I'm trying to get into the habit of doing these again, uh, I, I used to do them a lot, and I was learning so much, and I, I wonder now why I stopped doing them, um, I guess you just end up doing other work and other things, and studies sometimes don't seem like they're, they're always necessary, but, um, I'm realizing, you know, the importance of keeping up that study and also for the purposes of, um, you know, getting content for these videos and for the website and for you guys to learn. One thing it also teaches you is perspective. Um, not so much that you're, you know, drawing perspective grid and everything like that, but it is helping you see um, how objects will be affected and how the shapes and forms and everything will be affected at different viewing angles. So, a good example is just looking at the the ellipse of the of the teapot on the top and the ellipse also on the on the top of the bottle
So yeah, I've made a new layer and I'm painting beneath the lines. So I'm just blocking in the colors. If if you guys are new to digital painting, um, although although I think you should try it, but if if you're having just enough trouble with you know learning how to paint and using the brushes and things like that, you might want to try just doing it in grayscale and just getting a handle of how to blend different values and things before you try color but I definitely encourage you to do the color stuff because it teaches you heaps. I, I generally just block in some basic colors just for that shape and then you can come in once you have something down you can come in and begin to add variation and your darker and lighter tones and just the different variations in the hue hue being the color of a color so still life practice is really good fundamental practice and you'll tend to learn more than if you were just studying from a photo although you you'll definitely learn a lot from studying from a photo you won't necessarily you'll, you'll get a better understanding of how an object will be affected by by just how the eye sees so you know things in the peripheral of what you're of what you're focusing on it, it tend to gonna kind of blur out on the edges if you just stare at one point of an object like even your hand the things behind it will be blurry the background of what you're looking at will be blurry and um, say you're just focused on looking at the, the tip of your finger you'll notice in your peripheral why you're focused on your finger the rest of your hand will be um, kind of blurred so it'll help you understand different edges so edges are going to be softer or harder I, I tend to when I'm painting um, worry a lot about the edges at the end it's just the kind of treatment at the end but I do I do think about um, where I want a focal area to be so the focal area is where I'm going to have probably the highest contrast and more detail I'll spend more time on the rendering for that area and and these things will give the viewer the impression like whoever views your work they'll understand what you were actually seeing um, at the time um, photo Photos and things definitely have a quality of similar to the eye sometimes, but the thing is when when you're looking at, at a photo, it's only focusing through one lens, whereas your eyes are using two lenses, you know, your two eyes to um they they they're comparing what you're seeing so that you get the three-dimensional form so you're, you're understanding space not just a flattened image as a as a photo would be so yeah the painting from life is gonna really just be like boot camp training is just gonna do heaps for heaps for your art and it's a probably the best way you can study is to study from life study from real things and um, you know go out and draw and different things um, because as much as this is about digital painting you you want to go out and experience you know um, the creation around you you know things around you 
and yeah just draw from that creativity you see in the world so um, and and you'll be much more inspired that way and you'll fill up your visual library I definitely encourage that so that wraps up part one part two is just uh, more rendering and yeah catch the next video